The focus of this video will be on two basic constructions, copying angles and constructing parallel lines. Now these, I think, are two of the trickiest constructions that we're going to do in this unit. So you want to make sure that you find a quiet place so where you can focus on what's going on in the video. Make sure you pay close attention. And if necessary, take time to pause the video to catch up, to stop, rewind, and replay the video if you need to in order to make what I'm saying make sense. As always, with all of these constructions, if you need additional support or need additional help, make sure you go and visit the website on Math Open Reference, which you can link to through my website. So there's lots of resources that are available if you don't understand what's going on here in the video. All right, so the first construction that we need to focus on over the course of this video is to construct an angle that's congruent to a given angle. So I'm going to begin by, first of all, constructing the ray that makes up the bottom side of my angle. So I want to first of all take my straight edge and construct that green ray. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to start with a point that's going to represent the vertex of my angle. So that's going to be my point A in the new angle. I'm going to take my straight edge and I'm going to construct that ray which is going to mimic or copy ray AC in the given angle. Second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab my compass and what I'm going to do after placing the point of my compass at point A is I'm going to draw a nice arc that intersects both of the rays that make up the sides of angle BAC. So again, I'm just going to draw a nice size arc that intersects the angle in two different places. And now I'm going to, using that same compass setting, I'm going to come over here to my new angle and I'm going to copy that arc. Recalling or remembering that my compass is my measuring tool, what I want to do is I want to go over to this original angle, angle BAC, and I want to measure how wide this angle opens up. In other words, I want to measure the distance between those two blue points of intersection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to place the point of my compass on one of those blue points, and I'm going to place the second or the pencil in my compass on the second of those blue points. And I may have to rotate my compass a little bit in order to make that happen. So I'm going to shift my compass and rotate. might be a little bit easier for you with your compass here at home because I'm trying to rotate and then shift, rotate, and then shift. And I've got to go just a wee bit little further. So there I go. I've got my compass now opened up to the width that my angle opens up to. Now take a close look at where the point of my compass is. The point of my compass is on the point where the red arc meets the side of my angle. So this is very, very important. When I come over here to my new angle, I've got to make sure that the point of my compass goes on the point where the side of my angle meets the red arc. So this, in my new angle, is going to be where I'm going to put the point of my compass. And then once I've got the point of my compass there, I'm going to use my compass to go ahead and arc. And now I've got everything I need in place to go draw the second side of my angle. The second side of my angle is going to start at the vertex, of course, because all sides of the angle start at the vertex. And it's going to pass through that point of intersection where my red and my blue arcs crisscross. And now I've successfully copied my first angle and constructed a second angle that's equivalent. When we look to grade this construction, here's what we're going to be looking for. We're going to be looking for, to begin with, this pair of red arcs that are both made or constructed using the same compass setting. The second arc that we're going to be looking for when we grade this is we're going to be looking for that green arc. Well, that was a green arc right there. This green arc right here that represents where the um, point of the compass was placed down here on the blue dot creating or making that second arc. So that's copying an angle. Let's go try that one more time. So in example two, again, they're asking us to create or construct an angle that's congruent to the given angle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first copy the vertex of my angle. So there's the vertex or the new vertex in my new angle. I'm going to start by creating or constructing one side of the given angle. And now that I've got that going on in my picture, now I'm actually going to go ahead and pick up the compass. I'll put the point of my compass at the vertex of the angle. I'll draw a nice arc that intersects both sides of the angle. 
And then what I need to do is come over to my new angle. And this time I'm going to remember that this angle's an obtuse angle. So I'm going to draw a nice big arc. If you want to, you can even draw a full circle. But I'm going to keep in mind that this angle is going to have to open up quite wide. And at this point, I'm ready to measure exactly how wide this angle opens up. So I really want to measure the distance between those two points in my original angle. So I'm going to come over here and put the point of my compass on one of those red dots. And I've got to open or stretch that compass up until it intersects the second of those points of intersection. And now, before I move my compass, I'm going to take a real quick peek and I'm going to look exactly where that point of my compass is. The point of my compass is on the point where the arc intersects the side of the angle. So when I move that compass over to the new angle, I need to make sure that the point of my compass goes on that point where the arc intersects the side of the angle. So now that I've got that point determined, now I'm going to bring my compass over to my new angle using that same compass setting and I'm going to draw a new arc and try to make this one red. And now I'm really going to focus on that point of intersection. Remember that second side of the angle is going to be the point that connects the vertex to that original arc. So when I go to pick up my straight edge, I want to connect the vertex to that original arc. And now I've got two congruent angles. So that's the first of the constructions that you need to be able to master with this video. Remember that the power of the flip classroom gives you the ability to rewind and replay as many times as you need until you really feel in your heart of hearts you've gotten this construction down. All right, the second of our constructions has to do with parallel lines. Now, I'm going to show you a construction that's slightly different than the one that's available to you on Math Open Reference. You can use either on a quiz or a test. You can use either on your midterm. You can use either on a Regents exam. They're both good, valid constructions. The one on Math Open Reference uses corresponding angles or congruent corresponding angles in order to construct parallel lines. I'm going to show you some perpendicular lines because we've been practicing with those in order to construct parallel lines. But again, they're both good, valid ways to do this construction. All right, I'm going to start out by constructing a line through point R that's perpendicular to line PQ. Now, this is a construction that you should have already mastered. If you're having trouble with it, please go back and re-watch the video on perpendicular lines because this is a construction that you really, truly do need to know. So again, I'm going to go ahead and start by creating an arc whose center is at point P that passes through two points on line segment PQ. I'm going to focus in on those points of intersection and I'm going to use the line segment that's determined by those two points of intersection and I'm going to create or construct the perpendicular bisector of that line segment. Sometimes kids will want to make that perpendicular bisector pass right through point R. And if you do, if you want to use that for your arc length, you're more than welcome to use that for the length of your arc. Well, and I just want to go back and make this arc purple. So that's going to be the first part of this construction. I'm simply going to go ahead and I'm going to construct the perpendicular line segment from point R through line segment or line PQ. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mark this fellow perpendicular. I'm going to go ahead then and take my straight edge and extend this in the opposite direction because my second step is going to be through point R. So I'm going to go ahead and use that blue dot as my center. Through point R, I'm going to go construct the segment that's perpendicular to my perpendicular bisector. Ooh, this is getting good. Perpendicular to my perpendicular bisector. So I'm going to go up to R. And again, all I want to do is through point R, construct the perpendicular bisector of the perpendicular bisector. 
And this too is a, a, the second construction that you learned. If you need to, go back and revisit the video. Go back and revisit Math Open Reference so that you can get your brain wrapped around this whole idea of the perpendicular bisector. I want to go back and make that one green. I like how I can use my different color arcs, and I know that's a little bit harder for you to do. Beautiful. And then I'm going to grab my straight edge. And go ahead and connect the points of intersection of those two green arcs. And that guy was also perpendicular. So I'm going to mark him with a perpendicular. So now, because these lines are both perpendicular to the same line, they have to be parallel to each other. You might say the right angles represent a pair of congruent corresponding angles, making these two lines perpendicular. So again, really, the very this construction has two basic steps. The first step that you're going to do is you're going to draw the perpendicular from point R to line PQ. And the second step is you're going to construct the perpendicular to the perpendicular bisector. All right, let's go practice that one again. Through point A, we want to construct a line parallel to line M. So again, I'm going to grab my compass. I'm going to put the point of my compass at point A. I'm going to draw a nice arc that intersects line M. And I'm going to have to go or stop and go a little bit bigger. And because my arc doesn't quite intersect line M, I'm going to grab my straight edge and I'm going to extend that line. Beautiful. Now I've got these lovely two points of intersection. And I'm going to go construct the perpendicular bisector of those two points of intersection. And that perpendicular bisector will, of course, pass through point A. Um, because of the software, I can't get it to go exactly through that point of intersection. I may try to go ahead and shift this over a little bit. And it's not going to let me. So I'm just going to go ahead and take my straight edge and extend going in the opposite direction. And now that I've gotten that perpendicular line segment on there, now I want to go through point A perpendicular to the perpendicular bisector. So I'm going to go to, up to point A, draw a nice little circle. And again, I'm just going to construct the perpendicular to the perpendicular bisector. Beautiful. Grab my straight edge. And again, because that first perpendicular bisector was perpendicular here, and this guy is perpendicular here, I've got those two right angles, which just so happen to be a pair of congruent corresponding angles, making those lines parallel to each other. All right, so if you have questions that I haven't answered in the video, you know you need to, of course, go back and rewatch and see if that answers your question. If it still doesn't, why don't you take a minute to jot those questions down up at the top of the next page under Check Your Understanding so that I can make sure that I address your questions the next time you come back to class. And then I want you to go ahead and do those two constructions on the next page. See if you can construct a parallel line that's parallel or a line that's parallel to the given line through the point. 
and then lastly go ahead and see if you can copy an angle that's congruent to the given angle.